And uh, Paco, can you just try uh, to see if uh, all the room can hear you? Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? It seems to be OK. Oh, 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 okay, so uh, I'm Paco Ramos from Telven, part of Schneider Electric. Uh, we apologize not to be there. Sorry, but uh, my travel has been cancelled in the very last minute, so I'm very sorry for that. For that. We are representing Ideal Project, so um, I, I will let my colleagues say to present him himself uh, and start the presentation from our side. Okay, Said. Thank you, Paco. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Perfect. Good. Hello. Uh, my name is Zaid El Jassim. I, I'm work for, I work for the Danish Energy Association, Dennis Kennedy. And as my colleague said, we are very sorry for not attending, but we will try to do our best. and. Uh, if you have, uh, of course, any questions, um, then please, um, we'll try to answer them as well as we can with the internet connection. Otherwise, you're quite welcome also to send us emails um, <coughs> and, and do the communication this way. Um, um, I will just to try to correct my, uh, my colleague, uh, uh, Francisco Ramos, that we are not presenting the ideal project, we are presenting one small part of the ideal project, which is the congestion management and distribution network, mainly uh, work package uh, five uh, and four, and the coordination between them. Uh, very shortly about the, um, uh, this slide I just have added for uh, 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Are you still there? Yes, I am here. I'm talking. Hello. Uh, we, we missed part of the sentence. You were talking about the, the slide you were just adding, or you did just... Add? Okay. Well, can, can you hear me now? Now, yes. Okay. That's great. Um, please, if, you, if, if I fall off, then please tell me, uh, because I, I just keep talking. Um, Yes, I have added just this slide just to show you that uh, the, the partners in the uh, ideal project, we have uh, uh, some universities like uh, Tempera University, uh, UC3M, uh, from, uh, Tempera from Finland, uh, DTU from uh, Denmark, uh, UC3M from, uh, uh, from Spain, KTH from, uh, 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 from uh, Sweden, and RWTH from Germany, <coughs> and we have also some uh, industry like Schneider Electric, uh, Telvet, uh, and, and DSOs like A2A uh, and uh, Ostkraft from Denmark, A2A from Italy, um, Dens Energy uh, from, um, it's an organization for the data distribution uh, companies in Denmark. Um, yes. Uh, and Eric and Gas Finosa uh, are both from Spain. <clears throat> so I'll just go through the, our ideas and just introduction about the current situation and challenges that the DSOs uh, uh, could face in the, in the near future. We can see that the, uh, the, the, the network that we are uh, using or operating right now, it's, uh, it's old and aging. Um, in Denmark, for example, we have <coughs> uh, some uh, cables, transformers that are over 50 years old. Um, and we also see that uh, the demand is increasing uh, due to the, um, uh, to the policy, to the uh, new technologies like the electrical vehicles, heat pumps, um, or the concept of shifting from using um, uh, sh shifting from using fossil fuel to uh, renewables, so we try to. Um, there's a, a big focus on uh, reducing the emission of CO2, um, and this will, of course, create uh, challenges to the DSOs because this will increase uh, the number of DERs uh, and also. 
uh, uh, the increased demand. That's why we will need to find some solutions to overcome those challenges. <coughs> What we have done in IDEAL, we have proposed some uh, uh, solutions that I call them here the IDEAL solutions. Uh, is uh, that we, uh, instead of, uh, instead of uh, using the old traditional solutions, which is basically a, a reinforcement of the network or uh, uh, or just replacing some of the old equipments in network, um, we propose to um, uh, use an active network concept instead of a passive network concept. Um, and in this way, we will postpone the costly traditional solutions and will let us to use the full capacity of the distribution network. <coughs> And in order to be able to use the full capacity of the, uh, the, the distribution network, we have first to know the capacity of the distribution network. <laughs> um, because we have quite little knowledge about what's going on in the distribution network and how much really capacity we have in the distribution networks. And this will uh, lead us to some questions that we have to monitor the state of the network. We have uh, 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 we have to automatically decentralize. Uh, we have to have uh, automatic decentralized solutions uh, to solve congestions, or uh, instead of the traditional manual solutions. Um, and also, uh, uh, we should better use the distributed energy resources. That's why uh, uh, we. Uh, developed some algorithms that will uh, allow us to do uh, to do that. Uh, an over overview of those algorithms just by name, uh, the st state estimation algorithm, um, forecasting and state forecasting algorithms, um, secondary power control and territory uh, control, which also include uh, several algorithms, uh, uh, network configuration, market agent, and dynamic tariff algorithms. I just mentioned them in names here, uh, just so you are familiar with the, with the names when I mention them later on. Um, I'll try to show how those, uh, how, how, how those, are, how those algorithms are, uh, are connected to each other or in interact with each other to, uh, uh, to present the congestion management system. We propose at the low voltage, uh, 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 we propose a hierarchical uh, 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 approach where we have different voltage levels and also uh, different uh, level controllers. Uh, at the low voltage uh, substation automation unit, which is basically a, a PC, uh, where we, uh, we have a database that includes several algorithms uh, that interact with each other. The state, estimate, uh, state estimation algorithm and so on. Those, uh, the database uh, gets some input from different uh, 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 smart meters or weather data from distributed generations in the low voltage network. Um, and, um, and of course, uh, these are, will not be full uh, uh, data for all the nodes in the network. So we have state estimation algorithm to, to evaluate the state of the network. Um, and, and we have power control algorithms, uh, state, state forecasting algorithms that also uses an input from two other algorithms, uh, uh, what we call the load forecaster and the production forecaster that pro uh, the forecast the, the load in the distribution network and the production of the distributed generation, uh, uh, distributed energy resources in the, this, uh, in the low voltage network. And all of this uh, data information will be used by the power controller that will uh, predict if there will be if there will be any congestion in the network. In the case of any congestions, we have e either the power controller will uh, uh, control some of the distributed energy resources uh, in the network and solve the congestion, or uh, through an aggregator. At the different at the at the medium voltage uh, level, we have uh, basically the same setup, uh, where we have the same algorithms that receive information or data from different, uh, also um, 
from outside, uh, from like uh, distributed energy resources, whether data and so on. And also controls predict if there any congestion. They say basically the same uh, way as the low voltage power control uh, or, or at the low voltage level. Um, and also controls uh, if there is any congestion, try to solve this congestion by directly controlling some of the distributed energy resources at the medium voltage level or by using an aggregator. At the control center level, we also have uh, the DMS or what we call it uh, uh, the territory controller where we have uh, also a, 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 a uh, basically, it's a basically also a PC where we have a database and another set of algorithms. And here we have also um, a forecaster, state forecaster, that basically the same algorithms on the uh, on the same two other level controllers. But also we have a network reconfiguration algorithm and a market agent algorithm. The network reconfiguration algorithm, or uh, all, uh, is the same the same principle that we receive also information, uh, another set of information like the network topology, uh, set points, uh, weather data, and so on. And the, in, in the case of any congestion, the network reconfiguration algorithm will try to solve the congestion by reconfiguring the network. And, and if any congestion, uh, if, if the network configuration algorithm cannot solve the congestion, um, or um, there will be a, a congestion created uh, by the network configuration algorithm because it also operates or works as a slow restoration part uh, supporting the FLISR system, um, then the market agent algorithm will work to uh, communicate with the uh, with the with the marketplace um, and purchase uh, flexible energy uh, uh, products uh, to solve the congestion. You still hear me very well. Yeah. You're not sleeping. It's good. <laughs> That's good. Um, the next slide I'll show you a little bit, it's the same, basically the same setup, but I'll show you also the, the, the interaction with the FLISR system. The idea is that we have uh, several uh, uh, power controllers on the uh, secondary substations, so low voltage power controllers we have at the uh, secondary substations. And we also have uh, power controllers at the uh, primary substations. Both the low voltage power controllers and the uh, and the medium voltage power control the power controllers we call them in the ideal project secondary controllers. Uh, these two level controllers communicate with the technic uh, the the technical aggregator or the uh, or the territory controller that uh, includes network reconfiguration algorithm. Um, which is also including a power control algorithm or power control functionality. Uh, we have a dynamic tariff algorithm and a market agent algorithm. Um, the territory controller communicates with the with the uh, with the market, and the market we have also a whole work package that uh, uh, defines the, the market operator or the marketplace and also the aggregator functionality. Um, I'm not going to talk about that today, only the part where we have the uh, uh, technical part, which is the congestion management part. Um, the FLISR system, uh, which Paco will uh, talk later about, um, in the case of any uh, of, of a FLISR or, or a fault event, the FLISR system will try to uh, 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 resolve or solve the problem or the uh, uh, or restore as much first I, I identify where the fault is and so on and then try to uh, uh, resupply as much customer or reconnect as much customers as possible there will for sure be some customers uh, not uh, connected uh, then the FLISR system will con uh, communicate with the territory controller that uh, includes the network reconfiguration algorithm. 
um, the network reconfiguration algorithm will try to find to try to re reconfigure the network in order to uh, uh, resupply uh, uh, as much more customers as possible. Um, yes, this is aggregator assets. Maybe <laughs> animation came a little bit late. Um, the primary, uh, the the secondary controllers communicate with the aggregator. Uh, uh, we say we have um, a concept that either, uh, even if we have direct control, uh, it will be through an aggregator. It means um, even if the, the secondary controllers can uh, uh, communicate or directly control. Uh, the uh, the distributed energy resources of the aggregator, but it's uh, based on bilateral contracts or uh, based on some long-term contracts. And this is one of the not preferred solutions that would be called emergency situations uh, because this is a, a, a mainly a high-cost uh, solution. Uh, the Flissar system, my uh, colleague uh, Francisco may <laughs> kick in and uh, talk about the Flissar system. Yes, so can you pass me the, the screen, the control? Uh, how to do that? Um, Presenter, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, so uh, regarding Flisser, uh, we have implementing uh, ideal scope uh, th three main activities. So one is related to uh, protection function parameters update and other to decentralize Flisser solution. So both of them uh, very linked to IEC 61850 standard and the tertiary controller that uh, as I explained is very linked with the congestion solution. So f first of all, uh, the, the, our target was uh, improved feeder automation based on 61850. So basically is the sign of a decentralized solution based on the coordination among different ID in medium voltage lines uh, working under 61850 and using good communication. All, all of this is uh, uh, in, in the way to accelerate the decision taken, okay? Uh, the background was uh, is that uh, uh, continuous change in the topology for fault restoration and congestion management. This is uh, the picture today. Uh, high impact of uh, distributed generation, uh, connection on the protection system operation. So this creates a blinding effect, unnecessary uh, operation failing auto reclosing unintended Icelandic, etc., and uh, a high rate of malfunction by wrong configuration, by wrong configuration of the device protection. Okay. So, w what pushed us to to go in this direction? So, f first of, uh, of all, was the application of a 6150 standard for feeder automation. And um, one thing that uh, had uh, uh, pushed us uh, strongly, let's say, is that uh, the current trend of re replacing switches by breakers uh, along distribution feeders. Of course, the frequent ch uh, change and network configuration and so let's talk uh, uh, very quickly about one of the activities, which is uh, function parameters updated. So the, the objective for us was uh, uh, find a process to change remotely functional parameters 
and also data su subscription in peer-to-peer -peer communication, uh, of course, without uh, interrupting the operation. Uh, for that, uh, we have to uh, model uh, at a standardized logical node uh, within 61 and 60 standard protection and monitor and control function. Okay, this function has been modeled at the logical node level of the standard. Second, we have implemented uh, uh, embedded logic at the ID, at ID level for dynamic uh, reconfiguration, and uh, we use uh, MMS uh, communication to update logical node uh, setting values and goose ID subscription in order to have updated uh, the, the whole uh, network and uh, communication between devices uh, along the feeder. Uh, so, so second important activity, and um, uh, the, 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 the main one, is the decentralized free solution itself. So first, uh, th this slide, uh, you can you can see the, the part of the standard that uh, are, uh, we are working in for the for the fleet uh, automation solution, so which include uh, some use case uh, interesting use case for for us like like uh, fleet auto using auto recloser and fleet. Uh, based on distribution control. Of course, and the, there are some parts uh, uh, for ice landing, etc., and configuration of IEDs. In this activity, our, 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 main, our main target was decentralized uh, the, the fleet solution using uh, goods messages and taking into account the, the, the standard, of course. So. Uh, at the end, uh, basically, it's, it's a decentralized logic sele selectivity, and the uh, breakout is that we, we, we use uh, good messages. So we have two, two step isolation step uh, for the fast uh, logic selectivity. Uh, one is performed by the first step is performed by the the circuit breakers, so the IDs uh, controlling circuit breakers. So the, the closest to the fall uh, is responsible for clearing the fall by open, opening the breaker. So uh, in, in a second step, uh, switches are going to, to play, and the IDs controlling the switches uh, uh, will act. So uh, the ID closest to the fall is responsible to minimize, for minimize the uh, outage area. Uh, allowing after that the triple uh, breaker to re energize the healthy section of the feeder. In parallel, uh, we take into account the loss of mine, avoiding, for instance, uh, uh, landing operation, and uh, of course, uh, MMS uh, communication will, will interact with the substation automation unit algorithm to, to update the situation. So uh, basically, in this uh, picture, uh, we will see what uh, we will do in real uh, field. So this is a primary sewer station unit. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, in green color breakers, in blue color uh, switches, and this breaker is in red is open. Here we have a represent a microgrid. When a fall occurs, uh, these uh, IEDs will detect over voltage in that. So uh, a chronometric uh, function will start, as well as uh, communication messages between the IEDs sending blocking messages to the others. So this by his embedded logic will detect that he's the closest to the fault and he, um, he can operate. So 
it will open here, so we'll isolate all this part, if you see my pointer. So after that, the default will be clear, and uh, we will send different messages to uh, update the status and allow here uh, microgrid or distributed generation and blocking here, uh, disconnecting distributed generation here to avoid a uh, landing operation. After that, we will repeat the process, but at switch switches level. So now we can act here, uh, follow exactly the same logic, metric function, etc. This uh, device will detect that uh, he, he is the closest to the form, so he will open. And now we can restore this part of the grid and also uh, allow this uh, microgrid operation. So we will send uh, messages, uh, updating situation, and then uh, we, we will connect uh, again the, the grid. So, uh, update the status. So basically, th this is what, what we do at a um, decentralized level. Of course, uh, after that, uh, um, we will send the information to the tertiary uh, controller action, and uh, uh, we will try to restore uh, as much as uh, we can in the grid uh, and sort uh, congestion. Uh, this this uh, logic and new devices uh, are going to be implemented on field at eight way facilities in Italy uh, earlier in February. But first, we have uh, uh, developed a tool to simulate uh, all communication together with uh, the state of the of the grid. Uh, we can show animation at the fleets and we, we can examine different communication. Uh, of course, we, we, we have tried to simulate and uh, have a statistical analysis uh, in order to evaluate the robustness of the solution depending on the communication. Um, okay, thank you, Paco. As uh, Paco explained, um, the the uh, just make sure. yes um, uh, the first social team try to uh, will try to locate the uh, fault event uh, and uh, uh, restore uh, the fault and then communicate with the network reconfiguration algorithm that is located at the uh, 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 which is a part of the territory controller at the control center level um, to restore uh, more customers. Um, or as much customers as possible. Um, so here you can see a little bit overview of the network configuration algorithm, how it's triggered. It's here, um, it receives information like network topology, forecasting, uh, and state estimation. Um, and then um, it operates either on demand, um, uh, which is, uh, for example, by the Flisser system that uh, can trigger the, the, the algorithm. Uh, and then the out will be the switch's uh, uh, status and the voltage control set point. Or, or uh, uh, um, the, the network configuration algorithm can also be uh, uh, can, it can used on schedule, uh, like once a day, in order to um, uh, uh, optimize the operation of the network, or uh, or find the optimal uh, uh, configuration of the net uh, of the network. <coughs> specifications: some of the specifications of the territory uh, controller, or the network uh, reconfiguration, uh, uh, or territory controller for network congestion management. Uh, it it automatically controls the whole uh, network. Um, and, and it's the only algorithm that have connection to the marketplace. Um, and by using, uh, by operating once a day or on schedule, it 
to economically optimize the operation of the distribution uh, network and also functions as a slow restoration solution for network faults. Uh, uh, it has no uh, control, uh, direct control to DRs. It, uh, the DRs are activated through the marketplace, um, and, and, and it's based on day head and on demand operation. And it's located at the control center level. Um, we have done some simulations to uh, see the performance of the network configuration algorithm. Um, it's uh, this. Sorry, these simulations were on A to A network. We have uh, simulated uh, several faults. Uh, you can see the figure here on top. That's uh, uh, where we have uh, blue and red bars. Uh, the blue bar indicates the um, the event after a fault uh, situation. How much uh, power has been lost, or how uh, uh, how much yeah, share of the load has been lost? And uh, the 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 red bar uh, shows the solution that been proposed, uh, or the action of the tertiary controller, or the action of the network configuration algorithm. Um, how much power has been restored, uh, or how much load ha uh, uh, have been uh, reconnected to the network, and the and the figure below shows um, the the uh, the gray bar shows the actual or uh, the before fault. Um, uh, I'm sorry, after the fault loading of the lines. Uh, of the network, and after fo uh, and the green one is was before the fault loading of the network. Um, and the uh, and the the uh, you can see one is the maximum uh, capacity uh, of the uh, of the line. So here, if we, uh, for, let's take for example F1 as a, an example. Have been simulated a fault at F1 that you can find here. I don't know if you can see my pointer, but I'm pointing yes. at F1. Yes, we can. Uh, yes uh, at F1, branch has been simulated a fault. Um, and it has been lost uh, that much power. And uh, the, uh, the represented by the blue bar. The red bar uh, shows the, how much the temperature controller uh, restored power. Um, and we can see here in the gray line, um, uh, the, I'm sorry. The the green line is the base load before the fault event, and the and the gray uh, bar shows how much uh, loading in the uh, in this branch after the reconfiguration. So we are on the safe side. But one of the um, one of the uh, at F9 when we made uh, simulated a fault at F9. Um, the network configuration algorithm have restored most of the lost power, but this um, uh, result they resulted at congestion or overloading one of the lines. So uh, the 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 market agent algorithm, which is a part also of the territory controller, receives uh, receives this information that one of the lines uh, has been uh, is now over uh, overload uh, overloaded uh, because of network reconfiguration actions, and try to find some several solu several solutions to solve these problems, and uh, chooses the best solution or most economical solution, uh, the fastest solution to solve this uh, congestion. And here we can see that uh, if, you, if you see in the figure below, uh, the red bar shows the action uh, after the network configuration algorithm uh, that this one line has been, is now overloaded. And the, the, the blue bar shows that the, the solution that has been found by the uh, market agent, and then the green one is the uh, the final output of the territory controller. And we can see that uh, the combination of those two algorithms, uh, uh, the network configuration and the, uh, the market agents have uh, at the first the, the first action was to uh, resupply resupplied uh, 
uh, the lost power um, that was caused by a fault event then uh, solved the congestion that has been uh, 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 caused by the reconfiguration algorithm. The secondary, some specifications about the secondary controller for network congestion management. Uh, they are uh, located at the uh, secondary and primary substations, um, and they are responsible for local for the local networks, um, and they have no connection to the marketplace. Um, as I have explained uh, earlier, the direct control uh, at emergency situations will be through an aggregator or based on uh, uh, predefined contracts. Um, and um, those different level controllers have uh, coordination uh, or coordinated operations uh, to, to uh, to avoid uh, any overlapping or any uh, uh, misoperation between the two the different level uh, controllers. Um, and they are uh, based on real-time operation uh, and congestion forecasting. Some of the, uh, we have made also some offline simulations on uh, OSCAF, oh, uh, this one sorry for the, uh, on the UFT networks. Um, uh, we can see we can see that the low voltage power control is effective in curtailing the active power from PV unit. Um, the 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 uh, the, uh, the UFD network, uh, which is in Spain, um, it's not it's not a laboratory and it's not a, 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 a normal network, let's say. It's a combination of both, uh, where it has um, a concentration of some uh, PV units. Um, if I explain this figure, I show here that the the blue, uh, the, the green dotted line shows the maximum feeder capacity limit, and uh, the, the blue uh, line shows the uh, production of the uh, of the PV units. Um, and the power controller uh, uh, forecast, or the uh, the power controller can see that there is a congestion in the network that the capacity limit of the feeder has been exceeded, so curtails some of the uh, active power uh, uh, generated by the PV unit, as shown in the uh, yellow line. And the result is the uh, red line, which uh, uh, which shows the the, the active power uh, production from the PV units after uh, uh, the curtailment by the power controller. The low voltage power controller uh, also have uh, we can see that it's also uh, effective at minimizing reactive power flow. Um, here we show um, a base. Uh, a baseline, which is the blue line, uh, which is the uh, reactive power flow uh, in the network, uh, measured by the uh, uh, nearby the transformer, and the green line shows the actions uh, of the uh, the curtailed uh, or the minimized reactive power uh, uh, by the uh, low voltage power controller. And uh, yes. You have mainly, mainly you have also noticed that we have another algorithm at the territory controller. We call the dynamic tariff. The dynamic tariff is um, uh, is operating for itself. It's a concept that we believe also uh, uh, can help uh, uh, in congestion management. If I, the next figure maybe show better how the uh, how the uh, dynamic tariff algorithm operates. It's also it's also operated at the uh, it's operated or located at the tertiary controller. It's based on uh, it takes uh, it forecasts uh, the spot uh, spot price uh, uh, the prices from the spot market and also forecasts the 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 uh, consumption in the network. Uh, based on the electric vehicles and heat pumps, 
and uh, produces based of those two uh, uh, forecasts produces a dynamic tariff. Um, now, if we can see that, for example, a uh, congestion at six o'clock uh, tomorrow, um, the the, dyna the tariff will be high at uh, at that time. So the idea is that the the DSO will publish a new dynamic tariff every day, um, and then the the uh, to all the retailers in the network, even uh, the uh, because we believe uh, in the in the in the uh, market description uh, that we have and other work packages, we believe that uh, we assume that there is uh, retailers and uh, and aggregators, uh, and there is not. It's not necessary that all the retailers have aggregator functionality, but not the other way around. Uh, all aggregators should have a retailer functionality. So that means that the DSO will publish the dynamic tariff to all the retailers in the network, um, and also the retailer functionality of the aggregator. And the aggregator, uh, the aggregator will base its uh, energy schedule based on this, uh, uh, the new uh, dynamic tariff. Um, and in this way, we will uh, eliminate, el eliminate uh, some congestion. And it's, of, of course, a free of charge, let's say. How are we going to achieve that? Um, we have developed the algorithms. Uh, we test the algorithms as individuals as well uh, as, well as, uh, as a whole system. Um, we analyze the functionality and performance of the, our algorithms. Um, and then promote economical values for the DSO um, and uh, integrate the other pieces of the developed develop concepts and finally promoting uh, uh, the ideal concepts through our final report. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. <laughs> if you have any questions, then please. Okay for everyone. Thanks so much. Thank you.